Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is November 28th, 2022. <clears throat> this video is called Taking the, Kingdom of, Taking the Kingdom of God by Force. And it's part seven of my Obedience of Faith series. Um, I'm not feeling too well today. I uh, have come down with COVID again, SARS. COVID-2 came on me the very same day as it did last year, the day after Thanksgiving. This is my fourth day. Um, I take, use a protocol that um, you need to know. And if you don't know it, you can write me an email at glenn at zedek, Z-E-D-E-K. Dot US. I may cough, <clears throat> have a scratchy voice today, but I felt led to bring this word. Taking the kingdom of God by force. That's where we are today, and that's what we have to do. If we are to overcome, if we are to persevere to the end, we have to take the kingdom of God by force. So I'm going to take you through some scriptures today that I did not uh, dwell upon in the last video I did that covered Romans chapters 9 through 11. <clears throat> For those of you who followed me in detail, you'll realize that I did not read the last few verses of chapter 11 in the last video I did. I'm going to read um, another verse today but I'm going to focus on three verses from Romans. Romans 9, I'm sorry, 11, 25 through 27. Lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, brothers. Paul spoke many mysteries. A partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And in this way, all Israel will be saved. As it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. <clears throat> Most Jews have not come in to the kingdom of God, have not come into faith in Jesus Christ for the last 2,000 years. So how could it possibly be that at the end of the time of the Gentiles, which now is 2,000 years long, how could it be that when the partial hardening of Israel ceases and they do come in, how could that then be all Israel being saved. Israel is not what people think here. What is Israel? Well, the Bible tells us, of course. <clears throat> and that leads me to say something before I get into this. Do you yearn to eat good food? I'm talking about spiritual food. We all love natural food. We all spend ourselves for natural food, for good natural food. But do you spend yourself for good spiritual food? Do you fight for your food? Or do you still suck at the breast? Do you still let somebody else feed you all of your food and let somebody else decide for you what you can eat and what you can't eat. The violent take the kingdom of God by force. Those who sit and eat at their mother's breast, who let someone else always decide what their spiritual food is and will be, 
are not taking the kingdom of God by force. They will not be among those that this teaching is for. So, let's continue. <clears throat> In Exodus chapter 4, this is when God revealed himself to Moses. And here in verse 21, I am, says to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the miracles that I have put in your power. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let my people go. <clears throat> Just like what Paul said God did with the Jews. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says I am. Israel is my firstborn son. And I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. Israel is my firstborn son. In Romans 11, when Paul is talking about all Israel being saved, He's talking about all of his firstborn sons being saved. You know, there's talk that the Antichrist is going to soon come on the scene. Antichrist is already here. Satan has many children among us. And God says to Satan, let my firstborn son go, or I will kill your firstborn son. That's the time in history we have arrived at. The firstborn. Did you know that there is a church of the firstborn? That's what it's called in Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 18, for you have not come to what may, may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. Do you know what this is talking about? Read Exodus <clears throat> chapter 19. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the church of the firstborn. The assembly of the firstborn, the ecclesia, of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect to the spirits of the righteous made perfect are you being made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel see that you do not refuse him who is speaking for if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. This is speaking to Christians, and Christians don't like to read these warnings in the book of Hebrews. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. That's the time we're in now, the shaking. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Can you still be shaken? That's why we're going through this pressure right now. That's why I'm in my second battle with COVID. That's why... Earlier this year, I thought I had a stroke. Later after that, I thought I had heart, several heart attacks. I thought I was going to die at least 10 times within this last year. 
at least ten times. I commended my spirit to God in, on many occasions, held my wife and thought that was it. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. The citation in Romans chapter 9, verses 26 and 27, takes us to Isaiah 59. Fifty-nine, twenty, and 21 says this, and it's, it reads differently in the book of Isaiah. It's very similar to what Paul quoted, but he probably read from the Septuagint. And our Old Testament is not translated from the Septuagint. And this, when you go back to the original writing in the book of Isaiah, you will see that this is speaking about the new covenant. It says, Isaiah 59, 20, 21, And a Redeemer will come to Zion, and those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord, declares I am. Have you turned from transgression? Jacob is the supplanter. When Jacob turns from transgression, he becomes Israel. Verse 21, and as for me, this is my covenant with them, says I am. My spirit that is upon you, and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouth of your offspring or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says I am, from this time forth and forevermore. Last year when I had COVID, God specifically spoke to me, giving me this promise. I have every bit of faith. that God's words will never depart from my mouth. They will never depart from the mouth of my seed. They will never depart from the mouth of my grandchildren. Says I am from this time forth and forevermore. Now I will tell you a mystery. The New Covenant is primarily exposed by Jeremiah and Ezekiel in their books. There are really quite a lot of chapters that deal with the New Covenant. One of the most concise statements of it occurs in Jeremiah chapter 31, where he says this, Behold, the days are coming, declares I am, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares I am. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares I am. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, No, I am, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares I am, for I will forgive their iniquity 
and I will remember their sin no more. The church operates under the idea that it all walks in the new covenant. But it doesn't. Doesn't this say, No longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord? But yet that's what the church does all the time still. That's all they do is teach the little that they know to try to get a new convert. The new covenant has only come to those who have come into agreement with God and allowed God to write his law upon their hearts. The new covenant has only come to those who have walked in the obedience of faith. The new covenant has only come to the church of the firstborn. The new covenant has only come to those who were willing to take the kingdom of God by force. Who were willing to lay down their lives unto death in order to win the kingdom. What did Jesus say? concerning John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 11, verse 7. Well, chapter 11, Jesus, John sent a message to Jesus. Jesus sent a message back to John. But he didn't send this message to John. He said this privately to his disciples. Well, actually, he said it to the crowds, but not to those he sent back to John. As John's disciples went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. From the book of Malachi. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That's because John was still a man. Those who make it into the kingdom of heaven are perfected spiritual beings. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the, violence take, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. What does he mean? The violent take it by force. Let's go to Isaiah 33. Now I will arise, says I am. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You, you people, you carnal people, you conceive chaff. 
You give birth to stubble. Your breath is a fire that will consume you. You will destroy yourself with your own thoughts, your own ideas. And the peoples will be as if burned to lime, like thorns cut down that are burned in the fire. Hear. Hear. Listen to me. You who are far off, what I have done, and you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Here we're speaking of natural, physical Zion, who consider themselves to be of the religious chosen class in the world. This is not the new Jerusalem. There is an old Jerusalem, there is an old Zion. There is a new Jerusalem, there is a new Zion. We need to have spiritual eyes to understand what God is saying. The sinners in old Zion, the sinners in the natural world, the sinners in false religion are afraid. We're coming into a time more and more of fear and gross darkness. Trembling has seized the godless. And then here it comes. Here's the question. <clears throat> Who among us can dwell with a consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? Have you ever answered that question for yourself? Did you know that Isaiah was given the answer immediately after those questions? Here's the answer. So you need to ask yourself that question and the answer needs to be, I can, I can. The answer starts in verse 15. Isaiah 33, 15. He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises the gain of oppressions, who shakes his hands lest they hold a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from looking on evil, who shakes his hands lest they take a bribe, lest they hold a bribe, how many things do people do for money that destroy other people and destroy the earth? Look at the things they do to our skies, our water, our drugs, our health care. All for money. They took bribes. Who among us can dwell with the consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly, who despises the gain of oppressions, who shakes his hands lest they hold a bribe, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed. Do you listen to all the bloodshed? Don't do it and who shuts his eyes from looking on evil. Do you still watch all of the videos showing you what evil is going on? Don't do it. Don't fill your minds with bloodshed and don't fill your minds with evil. He, this person, will dwell on the heights. His place of defense will be the fortresses of rocks. His bread will be given him, his water will be sure, both spiritually and naturally. Spiritual bread, spiritual water, physical bread, physical water. Your eyes, the ones who do this, will behold the king and his beauty. They will see a land that stretches afar. Your heart will muse on the terror. Where is he who counted? Where is he who weighed the tribute? Where is he who counted the towers? You will see no more the insolent people. 
the people of an, of an obscure speech that you cannot comprehend, stammering in a tongue that you cannot understand. Behold Zion, the city of our appointed feasts. That's new Zion now. Your eyes will see Jerusalem. That's the new Jerusalem. An untroubled habitation, an immovable tent, whose stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there I am, and majesty will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams, where no galley with oars can go, nor majestic ship can pass. In other words, the Canaanites cannot come in. The traitors cannot come in. For I am as our judge, I am as our lawgiver, I am as our king. He will save us. Remember that in Hebrews 12, when he spoke of the church of the firstborn, he also speaks of the new Jerusalem. The violent come into New Jerusalem. The violent are the ones who can dwell with a consuming fire. They're the ones who can dwell with everlasting burnings. They are the ones who ultimately can come into the very presence of God and see God face to face because that's the decision they made. That's the obedience they walked in. It was a life of faith. They never get in by their good deeds because they're never going to be good enough in this flesh. But God will get them there. And now I want to read you a sh couple of short things that I was sent by a prophet named Ken Visher. V-I-S-S-C-H-E-R. I will uh, try to remember to put a link to uh, what I'm reading from so you can read it and then perhaps look for some more of his work. The man is incredibly anointed. He was recently led to communicate with me again after several years. <clears throat> We had not uh, talked to each other for about six years, I think. And then when I was in the midst of what I believed were my heart attacks uh, in August or September of this year, suddenly I got a letter from him and uh, he, was, he felt led to write to me and had some encouraging words and just recently Just before this COVID hit me again, he he sent me links to several of his posts. And I'm going to read one of the prophecies included there. But before I do that, I'm going to read something I got for him today. From a woman he believes is a fellow overcomer from Germany. She wrote this to him and he forwarded it to me. The woman writes, For the overcomer, the pressures of this world, of our children or parents or relations, <coughs> of the massive crisis in the drug scene or the conspiracy scene, all of this works upon us, this cross. This is the cross that we have to bear. Jesus said, pick up your cross daily and follow me. This is our cross. The pressures of this world. Everything going on right now. Right now, at this time, the Lord is allowing the worst thing imaginable to happen to his children. This year, now, for over one full year, has been harder than anything I could have imagined. I just, I can't even describe it. I 
camp. That which they feared the most, like Job of old, who feared the worst in his time, that is what is happening under the true son and daughter called to the first resurrection. The first fruits resurrection, the church of the firstborn. They are finding that what they desire and want in life is not being given to them. What they long for and hope for is distanced from them. And instead, the pressures of the world around them is increasing day by day. And they are being overcome by it minute by minute. Their loved ones are not walking in what they would desire to see in them. And even their own steps are often a disgrace for them to think of. Some may not have such a depth of perplexity happening, but from what I hear and see, many are almost totally despairing of their life in this world. The worst of the worst seems to be happening to them all when they stated to the Lord that they would be found as overcomers in this present evil world. And Ken Vischer prophet of God says the same thing has been happening to him and he knows it's been happening to me. And now I want to read to you just the prophecy, the vision that God gave Ken years ago. He thinks this was up 18 years ago. I'll put the link below and then you can go read everything about it. Then the angel which supported me took me aside to show me the magnificence of those who would be called overcomers. Even these who forsook all things to be like their Lord. I saw in its entire scope the new Jerusalem from the bottom to the top, including the foundations as though, as though they were steps going upward and ending at the base of the gates and the jasper wall. Far above the pinnacle of the city, on the top of the Mount Zion, in the midst of the city, I saw a fire enfolding upon itself and in the midst of the billowing waves of fire, a throne set, and one who sat upon the throne, even the Ancient of Days, the Lord God Almighty, the great I Am that I Am that Moses knew. As I looked at the fire, it began to grow and to envelop other parts of the holy city. The fire would enlarge and enlarge, developing more and more of the city, enveloping more and more of the city. Looking down at the foundation, I saw the overcomers, each individual one climbing up the foundation stones as one would crawl up a staircase. On their heads were flames of fire from the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which was given to them by the Lord Jesus Christ when they first began their pilgrimage to become those who would be called overcomers. It's been 46 years for me as they clambered up the foundation steps, I saw that more and more the fire unfolding itself would lick down upon them slowly and more and more enveloping them in an even greater measure than the flame of the fire of baptism, which they already possessed. As they climbed higher on the foundation, the fire would consume them more and more until finally they came to the top of the foundation stones and they were fully engulfed, each one individually, in the fire, which enfolded in upon itself, which was the very same fire in which the throne of God was set. <coughs> so when I looked upon God and upon the small overcomer, the fire was the same.
the violent take it by force. The engulfing of the fire was the same. And the holiness of the individual overcomer was the same as he who is known as the Ancient of Days. And my heart was greatly shaken at the sight as I saw men and women who were but ordinary people be consumed in this fire, which it folded in upon itself. I saw back to the beginning of the climb up the foundation stones that the overcomers were given power from God to enable them to even move their feet or their arms forward to climb. They were unable to climb except for the power that came from God. I can attest to this. This power from God was in two places. The power from God was above them, drawing them upwards. Yes, if God doesn't draw me, I can't go. And this power from God was the impetus within them to give them strength to move towards this drawing. Yes? If I don't have the strength within, I can't go. <coughs> I can't produce it. I can come into agreement with it. And I can follow God when he draws me and then gives me strength within. As God drew them, and they had impetus to move forward in this drawing, they would then climb. Otherwise, they had no way of having any strength to do so, but were unable to even make the first step. God works in us to will and to do according to his good pleasure. This was bare, intelligent faith in action, not doubt and boldness, not fear. That was the power that came from God. As they climbed, the power increased more and more. And then he quotes Matthew 13, 12. For whoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever has not, from him shall be taken away, even what he has. The violent take the kingdom of God by force. We are nearing the end of our race. The pressure is overwhelming. For you who have ears to hear, I hope that this is an encouraging word. Again, if you need help with what to do if you have COVID, I have the SARS, you know. SARS COVID 2, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus. Breathing for the last four days has been a challenge. But I do not believe I'm going to die. These have been tests from God for my perseverance. I pray the Lord will bless you and keep you, give you the strength the encouragement from above and the power to walk as he leads you in the name of I am, our God, our King. <clears throat>